Welcome in to the Cleveland Browns Report. I am your host, Matthew Peterson. Today's show was filmed during our live Browns Report, which airs every single Thursday at 4 Eastern. So make sure you tune in for our next live edition. But today's show is all about trades because you know what? There's nothing more American than trading players and ice cream trucks. So we're going to go through a couple of trade ideas that maybe make sense for the Browns, and I'll give my takes on them. But first, I think it's important to set the foundation. If you want to trade for anyone, you got to have something to trade. And the Browns currently have eight picks in the 2023 NFL Draft. They don't have a first-round pick to offer up. They're not trading their second. They do have two-fourths, though. They do have a third thanks to Quezzy getting hired by the Vikings. So they do have some ammunition, believe it or not, to try and pull off a trade. So here is my first trade target. Tight end Mike Gusecki. I know it is a bit of a head scratcher, but hear me out. Because when there's smoke, there tends to be fire. We saw this transpire over NFL Cut Day. Jalen Rager's getting traded. Jalen Rager's getting traded. Well, he ended up getting traded. And Mike Gusecki trade rumors have been alive and well. The Dolphins have been rumored to be interested in trading him after placing him on the franchise tag this year because Mike McDaniel comes over from San Francisco where they just ran the football down your throat. Gusecki's not a kiddle. He cannot block that well. That is not a part of his repertoire. So he has struggled so far in South Beach, catching on with this new playbook, and it's made him affordable. And we're talking about a tight end last year that would have been the number one leading receiver on this Browns roster. And he had a bit of a down year with 780 yards. Two touchdowns, former day two pick out of Penn State, would slot in quite nicely on this depth chart here. I think he would be an actual Austin Hooper, right? And hopefully actually go for something after catching the football and not just go down immediately. I think this one is reaching for the stars a little bit. But I wouldn't be blown away if Andrew Barry decides to go a little bit more chips in the middle of the table if Kaseki could be got for somewhat cheap. Now, here's what Pro Football Focus said about the trade rumors. In fact, the Dolphins have brought up Kaseki's name to other teams. A league source told Pro Football Focus, that doesn't mean anything will transpire, but Miami has been willing to engage in conversations. So hold on to that thought, and then let's connect it. To this tweet right here from Jack Duffin, who says, I wonder if Andrew Barry decides to call Miami and ask about Mike Gusecki. Miami has a need at running back, so the Browns could trade Dearness Johnson for Gusecki. A bit of a win-win for both parties. Miami wants to have a good stable of running backs for Mike McDaniel's offense. Not really shaping up to be like that right now. Chase Edmonds is their number one, and that's fine. But this is really the first time he's gone into a season being a number one. DEJ could help out immensely. And if Kaseki's not geared to fit this offense, why keep him around on an expensive franchise tag? And teams can have two players on the franchise tag, by the way. But name a player you want to trade for. This is your opportunity to be a part of the show and sound off in the comments section. Who would you like to see the Browns trade for? I'll be looking down in the comments section. Next trade target. Let's attach. Let's attack the wide receiver in need here. Denzel Mims. If he wasn't traded during NFL Cut Day, there's some reason to believe that he might not be traded now. But it's not over. I mean, this 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 stuff happens in the NFL. So the Jets' own GM was on a podcast with the Athletic, and here's what he said about not trading Denzel Mims. Ultimately, nothing materialized especially anything we would consider the right value for a player of Denzel's talent and ability. Well, we just saw Jalen Rager go for a seventh and a fourth, and he was a first-round pick. Denzel Mims goes for, as a former second-rounder, who has only had 490 career yards, call it a fifth. It sounds about right-ish, right? Now, here's what Denzel Mims said. Of course I'm frustrated that I'm going to be playing with the start. I'm not going to be playing with the starter. But I just got to continue to work. Yeah, he is buried on this depth chart behind players like rookie Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios. Some don't even think he's wide receiver five here. 
So Denzel Mims, a name to keep an eye on for sure. Now, today is the first day of September as we film this live show, but we are off on a sub battle with our Steelers Talk channel here at Chat Sports for the entire month of September. So you know what? I want to destroy them in subs. If you hate the Pittsburgh Steelers, if you love the Cleveland Browns, and if you are competitive like I am, go ahead and click that sub button. Let's check out the next trade target. This one comes from the Detroit Lions. Quintez Cephas, uh, Cephas, excuse me. And this is a lower key name, but a name to keep an eye on for. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But first, today's sponsor, BetUS, has a great deal for the dog pound. Not only can you get a 125% deposit bonus, but they'll also hook you up with some of the best lines out there. When you go to chatsports.com slash bet and you put in promo code BROWNS125, put in $100, they're going to give you an additional $125. What do you want to bet on? How about this right here? How about the Browns plus three? How about the Browns money line? They were favored against the Carolina Panthers not long ago. What's changed? Just attitudes and mentality towards Baker. Nothing else has changed. I'm taking the Browns money line. I already placed my bet a month ago because I was that confident on it. Make your bets today at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Browns125. Another great spot to also make all of your Saturday college football picks. Now, let's take a deeper dive at the Lions wide receiver, Quintez Cephas. So a former day three pick out of uh, just two years ago, 35 career receptions, 500, 553 yards, and four touchdowns. Guys, if this is a stat line for someone on the Browns wide receiver depth chart, one of the more impressive stat lines out there because this room is, rad, 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 this room is largely untested. And right now, Cephas is pretty well buried on this Lions depth chart, which, by the way, is still waiting for Jamison Williams to return. Once he comes on this team, he'll be wide receiver two or wide receiver three at worst, and that's going to bump everyone down. The Lions might try to sell now and get something for a player who might be demoted off the active roster once Jamison Williams is healthy here. Now, while we talk about wide receivers, we like to keep it light here at the channel. We don't always have to do a deep dive on the X's and O's of players. So who is your favorite Browns receiver of all time? I always cheat when I give my answer. I go Josh Cribbs only because you, you say Josh Cribbs, you think of special teams, but I'm a sucker for special teams. So I go Josh Cribbs every time. Let me know who your favorite receiver is in the comments. Speaking of receivers, our last trade target is an oldie but a goodie, Darius Slayton. So after a lot of talk, I thought he would not make the Giants' initial 53-man roster. Ultimately, we saw some injuries happen at the Giants' wide receiver room, and that opened up an avenue for Slayton to make this roster. The Giants were in heavy trade talks. Couldn't find an offer. Might that change now? Darius Slayton is probably the most proven guy we've talked about today. Not probably. He is. He's got nearly 2,000 career yards and 13 touchdowns. The issue is what we've talked about all along. 12 drops over his last two seasons. He has just slowly been declining since his fantastic rookie season, fifth round pick out of Auburn. So Darius Slayton, another name just to keep an eye on as we get closer to week one. Maybe Andrew Barry gets a little impatient at practice and goes, you know what? This room ain't cutting it. We got to make a move now to help Jacoby Brissett weather the storm for 11 games. Now, before we get you guys on your way, make sure you click that sub button. If you haven't already, would greatly appreciate it. Goes a long way to helping us grow the channel here at Chat Sports to get more studio time, to get more Browns content out to the dog pound. 